I'm here today to talk to you about something that has been weighing heavy on my heart and mind for some time now, and the time has come for me to address it publicly. Like so many of you, I look around at our country today and I find it hard to recognize. I see colleagues unable or unwilling to work with each other, neighbors and families divided against each other, and our state house too often unable to function for the people of Arkansas. And this isn't just because of political difference. It's because we've let ourselves become deaf to other folks' needs and perspectives. And our political parties have not only allowed this, but too often encouraged and rewarded it. I also worry that our country is losing its civility in the public square. I hear language that I wouldn't want our children to hear. I see our fellow citizens turning each other into enemies because of difference of opinion or party. I've seen our politics become a winner-take-all game that leaves too many folks losing. And I ask myself, how can I honor my oath to serve all of the people of Arkansas when we're only listening to a louder and smaller base? Sadly, what I see is a broken system that needs to be fixed. It's time for change and some tough decisions. Today, I'm announcing that I'm leaving the Republican Party and will continue to serve the people of Arkansas as an independent with no party affiliation. This comes after many sleepless nights, a lot of serious consideration, and it comes with sadness and disappointment. But it's clear-eyed. I'm making this decision because my commitment to our state and our country is greater than loyalty to any political party. The decision is one of the hardest decisions I've ever made in my life. Many of you know that my family and I have long been active members of the Republican Party, and many will continue to be. One of the first times I went to the polls, I proudly cast my vote for Ronald Reagan. I believe that he and the Republican Party represented my beliefs, my values, and policies that I thought would be good for America. I went on to serve our country in the military to protect our freedoms under commanders in chief of both parties with pride. I came home and started a family business and became more active in the Republican Party. And as you know, I've served in both houses of our legislature and worked with leadership roles for more than 15 years. But now's not the time to read my resume. It's time to tell you why I'm making this decision. While I've watched our politics become more polarized for some time, now I've started to see and hear things over the last few years that, to be honest, left me deeply concerned about the state of our politics. Division has been taken to a whole new level. Our political discourse has become boldly us versus them. From some quarters, it is loudly mean and disrespectful to our country, our traditions, and our fellow citizens. And way too often, we seem to be unable to agree on simple facts. I've watched a systemic change at the core of our politics that emboldens our worst impulses, the most extreme thinking, disables policymaking, and hurts all of us. It would be easy to blame this on one person or on a few. But sadly, it runs more deeply and cuts more broadly than that. Over the course of the 2016 campaign season alone, I heard people demonized as rapists and murderers. I watched the encouragement of the worst voices of racism, nationalism, and violence. And I watched my service and the service of my fellow soldiers dishonored with the ridicule of a Gold Star family whose son had served with distinction. I also heard a hero of mine, John McCain, called a loser on national television. I watched the former president actively fan the flame of racist rhetoric, make fun of those with disabilities, bully his enemies, and talk about women in ways that would never be tolerated in my home or business. As he did this from the highest office in the land, I realized that my daughters and my granddaughters were hearing it too, and I worried about the example this set for my sons and grandsons. And I watched as this behavior went on with nobody holding him to account and our party leaders too often taking a back seat rather than leading. And then for months, I watched as members of my own party and our former president tried to overturn the results of a fair and free election, the very hallmark of our democracy, with lies, with false statements, conspiracy theories, and attempts to subvert the Constitution. This led to the violent events of January 6th when we all watched violence in the halls of our nation's capital and couldn't believe our eyes. We couldn't believe what we were seeing was our own country, but it was. For me, that day was the final straw. 
I asked myself, what in the world would I tell my grandchildren when they asked one day what happened and what did I do about it? At the end of the day, I want to be able to tell my family, my friends, and the people I serve that I did everything I could to do right by them. I want each of you to know that even though I'm making this decision, I haven't changed. In fact, that's why I'm making this decision. I still believe in a government that is restrained, yet meets the needs of its people. I still believe in fiscal responsibility. I'm still a conservative, but I'm one whose values about decency, civility, and compassion I just don't see in my party anymore. I haven't changed. My party has. Let me be clear. I've got friends and family that are still Republicans. There are still really great people in the Republican Party, and I respect the fact they are going to stay and try to right the ship. But I've come to the conclusion that I can have the greatest impact outside of either party. Ever since I started running for elected office and working in government, I believe that it was both my honor and my job to do the work of making progress for the people of the state of Arkansas. I still believe that. That's why I'm making this change. I'm doing this because I believe that the best politics, the ones that really serve the people, happen when we come together, when we collaborate, when we find ways to compromise without compromising our values. It's this middle way that has led to our greatest achievements in Arkansas and has molded who I am as a politician. You know, there are many politicians, both Republican and Democrat, I've been fortunate to work with and know personally over the years. Of course, my uncle is Asa Hutchinson. I've always respected him for being patient, thoughtful, and extremely pragmatic when it comes to solving problems. I've also worked alongside Joyce Elliott, a Democrat who has shown me time and time again what it looks like to fight for the people of Arkansas, not always win, but to never give up. And it was Charlie Stewart, a seasoned Democrat legislator, who took me under his wing in my first days in office and showed me around the place, taught me the ropes, and how to do the hard work that I was sent down there to do. I'm not being sentimental, and I don't think it's time for us to go back. I believe it's time for us to move forward, and the only path forward is together we have to find common ground and start from there. With that in mind, I'm also announcing today that I'm founding Common Ground Arkansas, an organization that will work to find and support leaders willing to come together instead of continuing to push us apart. We want to encourage the trip across the aisle and make it easier to resist the forces that continue to push both parties to extremes. We want to provide a home for those who don't feel comfortable with either party, while also working with reasoned and responsible leaders from both parties. You'll be hearing more about Common Ground Arkansas in the coming days. But I want to invite other leaders, business, political, civic, and citizens to join us in this work. We want folks from both parties and, like me now, no party at all, to join us. If you find yourself politically homeless, we've got a place for you. We're trying to find productive ways to do the work for our people here at home in Arkansas in ways that we can all be proud of. I hope you'll join us. It's the work that I believe must be done, and it's good work to do. Finally, it remains my great honor to serve the people of my home state. I want to thank all of you who support me in doing this work. I want you all to know that I'm more committed than ever to serving all of the people of Arkansas and to do my best to do it with respect, integrity, and honesty. Thank you for your time.